Gaijin has just confirmed the addition of Rank 8 Jets. Alongside this will be the introduction of some Rank 7 Premiums. So first, let's take a brief look at the new Premium and then also talk about some implications of Rank 8 vehicles. The A6E Intruder in its Tram variant will be coming to the game as a Rank 7 Pre-Order Premium. And by the way, TRAM stands for Target Recognition and Attack Multisensor. Anyone familiar with the Intruder will already know this, but if you don't, it is a dedicated ground attack platform. It's capable of mounting a wide variety of suspended weaponry, including 20mm gun pods, and a truck, or tram load, of dumb bombs and up to five 2,000-pound GBU-10 laser-guided bombs. Performance-wise, the plane should be able to reach 1,000 km per hour at sea level. However, in terms of actual game performance, it's best to wait until the dev server before drawing any conclusions about maneuverability. The A6E will come equipped with all aspect sidewinders, which is not too surprising given that the A10 and Su-25 also received the same treatment. At this BR, most enemies you'll encounter will have countermeasures, but you'll still be able to pick off players who are distracted. And on screen now are the various pre-order bonuses, which should be available until the patch drops. And unless you're buying it just as a collector, definitely wait until you can play it on the dev server so you know what you're getting your hands on. But of course, if you don't want to mess with the dev server or just want to know more about the vehicle, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss my coverage of it. Next, let's talk about planes that Gaijin could introduce in the future now that rank 8 vehicles are confirmed. Now let's start by addressing the obvious, the F-16 and its eastern counterpart, the MiG-29. Compared to the current crop of top tier jets, the F-16 and and MiG-29 will offer a massive leap in flight performance. However, it's likely that the first variants of these jets added to War Thunder will be the early variants, which will be relatively balanced against each other as well as not being a too massive of a jump compared to the current top tier. Early variants of the F-16 also saw widespread use throughout the world, which would mean that quite a few nations could receive them at the same time. Over its service life, the F-16 received a plethora of upgrades, including upgrades to its engine, radar, and and weaponry. It's likely that Gaijin will slowly release more powerful variants of each jet over 2023, since that's how they've done it with many other jets currently in the game, such as the MiG-21 and MiG-23. Obviously, there are way more F-16 variants than just early and late, but there is already a video on the channel that goes into more detail, so I'll just link that somewhere at the end of this video. It's also worth reminding everyone that gauges for the F-16 were found in a previous data mine, and while that doesn't really mean anything in and of itself, I think it definitely adds credence to the theory that F-16s are not too far off now that rank 8 jets are confirmed. And I'm personally hoping to see the Swedish Gripen added to War Thunder at some point, or at least the two major variants. They would really add some unique flavor to Sweden. Plus, I really like the way it looks with the canards. At some point, we can also expect upgrades of current airframes. For example, an improved variant of the Tomcat with more powerful engines. However, there are also way too many of those, so I won't bore you all to death by listing every every single one. A few other likely candidates for rank 8, although maybe further down the line, are the F-15 Eagle and the Soviet Su-27. There are also plenty of other airframes that Gaijin could add, including some downright strange ones. But I think fighter-wise, I have covered the ones that are most widely known and most likely to make an appearance in War Thunder in the near term. While the addition of new airframes is certainly flashy, we should not forget about the introduction of new missiles. All aspect missiles are quite common at top tier currently but we haven't even scratched the surface yet. Modern missiles like the AIM-9M will have improved IR countermeasures, making them less susceptible to flares. Eventually, we could also see platforms like the early AIM-9X variants, R-74s, and the IRIS-T. I won't be going into further detail about future missiles today, but let me know if you want to see a video dedicated to those in the future. But then we have the Pandora's box of beyond visual range missiles. We've already scratched the surface a little bit with the AIM-54 Phoenix, but just on the horizon is also the R-27, which is basically an improved variant of the R-24 we have already on the MiG-23 MLD. But calling it an incremental upgrade would be quite misleading. Gaijin could also possibly add the R-77 and AIM-120 AMRAM to later variants of the MiG-29 and F-16 respectively. But I wouldn't expect to see those missiles for quite some time, so let's move on. I'm expecting an even larger shift to beyond visual range over time. We might not feel it right away at patch 
launch day, but Rank 8 planes will likely live and die by their missiles and avionics. A little bit like real life. Depending on what these planes get stock, the stock to spaded performance gap might also be rather problematic. Given the current direction of Gaijin and their development of War Thunder, it is inevitable that more modern jets and weapon systems will be added within the next few years. Despite this, I'm rather apprehensive when it comes to Rank 8 jets. The addition of these iconic planes is definitely exciting, but I'm also very worried about the gameplay and balance. Quite a few of the jets that could be included in Rank 8 are also in active service, which means Gaijin will have to navigate a minefield when it comes to finding sources. Let's just say it's not uncommon for players to leak highly classified documents in an effort to get their favorite vehicle into the game. And on top of all that, Rank 8 could also potentially open up more advanced CAS options. Because at this point, it really wouldn't be surprising to see anti-radiation missiles, such as the AGM-88 Harm, come to the game. The addition of such missiles would definitely be a huge shakeup to the meta in Ground RB. For more details on the MiG-29 and F-16, check out these two videos next. Oh, and make sure to subscribe.